everybody and welcome to Raising Vibrations and to the monthly forecasts. Hope you're doing well. And uh, in today's video, I'm going to be helping you understand a little bit about aspects and phases. And uh, this is my little piece on um, how I do my little forecasts in a unique way. So aspects and phases is a way that evolutionary astrology uh, uses to measure the cycles that planets have in relationship to themselves, okay, and to other planets, pardon me. So what happens is you've got two planets, say for instance, Pluto and um, Venus, and what evolutionary astrology will do is they will take those two archetypes and measure the relationship that they have between each other, and then from that measurement and from that relationship establish what type of phase and what type of evolutionary condition those planets carry within each other. And it's really fascinating because when you begin to measure your planets in relationship to other planets, you begin to see the development of how you actually experience your life through these aspects and phases. Now, I've got a little slideshow over here quickly that I want to show you in terms of what is the philosophy behind aspects and phases and what type of methodology do we use to actually... Um, to uh, measure this, okay? So I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so what you're looking at is two, two pictures. On the left-hand side over here, you can see this is about life itself, okay? The first thing that we understand is that everything is in a cyclic formation. Everything is moving through time and space. And so because of that, it is not separate that when you look at two planets or three planets in a birth chart, that they are also in this life cycle. There is a life cycle that each planet has. And each planet in relationship to another is reflecting where that life cycle is. It's no different than measuring a new moon, a first quarter moon, a last quarter moon, and a, and a, and a full moon. It's exactly the same thing. We just do it with planets now. And you can see that when you have a new moon, there's a new intention. When you have a full moon, we're coming into a halfway completion cycle. Again, phasal relationship and life, how it's evolving. And the picture on the right-hand side reflects to us that everything in is, is in relationship to everything else. Everything. Okay, it's like a revolving door. The moment that you walk through a revolving door, as you're moving outward, somebody from the outside is coming inward and that door is, is revolving us around it. And it's like as one energy moves outward like that, another one's moving in. And everything is in a consistent relationship with everything else. And so because of that, it's natural for us to understand that when we look at planets in our birth chart, there's a natural cycle in terms of awareness, and there's a natural phasal relationship that exists between planets. And when we measure that, what we get is this beautiful harmonic dynamic of where we are in our consciousness and how that has been developed. Okay? And the next thing is how do we actually then establish and what methodology we do we use in order to understand these aspects and phases? Well, in, in evolutionary astrology, you work with the planets, okay? So you've got Mercury, Venus, you've got Mars, you've got Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, okay? And then you have the Sun. Now, in this diagram, everything revolves around the Sun. So when you measure something in evolutionary astrology terms, there's always a focal point, right? There's a focal point, and there's always a planet that's in relationship to that focal point. And the way that you understand what focal point you have to look at, you understand the relationship that these planets have to the sun. So the sun will always be a focal point, okay? That's so when you say, for instance, want to understand the phasal relationship between Neptune and Jupiter, well, then it has a little bit of a different cycle, but still the same. When you measure planets in relationship to each other, you're measuring the fastest moving planet in relationship to the slowest moving planet. The fastest moving planet in relationship to the slowest moving planet. So therefore, if I had to say, for instance, ask you, what is the phasal relationship between Jupiter and Neptune? You would go, Jupiter is the faster moving planet, Neptune's the slowest moving planet, and so therefore, Ju Neptune would be your focus point because the slowest moving planet is always the focus point. And that's the key that I want you to take away from this conversation. When you measure aspects and phases in your chart, you're measuring two things. One, if you're measuring it against the sun, the sun will always be a focus point. So you're always looking for the focus point. 
and that will always be the sun if you're comparing it against something. Secondly, if you're comparing two planets with each other, you always measure the slowest moving planet as the focus point. So what happens now is you go, okay, I've identified that Neptune is the slowest moving planet, Jupiter is in relationship to it, and so then how do I understand how this works? Very simple, you get a little chart. And this is um, courtesy of the Evolutionary Astrology uh, Glossary, an ebook. And as you can see here on the chart, you've got this whole entire thing. New phase, crescent phase, first quarter phase, give us phase, all these phases. And each phase represents an aspect of development. So what you would do is you would take your slowest moving planet and put it at the zero. You would take your fastest moving planet and mathematically calculate the degrees of separation. Okay, so if Neptune's here and Jupiter, say for instance, here, you would see that Jupiter is exactly 90 degrees, 90 clicks away from Neptune. And by understanding that phase relationship, you would go, okay, it's a crisis in action square. And this is what I love about it so much. When we look at squares in astrology, we're like, oh, it's a square. But in EA, there's two types of squares. There's a crisis in action square and a crisis in consciousness square. And they're remarkably different in the sense. Okay, so you can actually try and read your chart. So oh, I've got Pluto square Mars as an example. The way that Pluto square Mars is going to work in your charts, if it was crisis in consciousness versus crisis in action, are going to be remarkably different. Now, when you have that power within your own awareness to apply that to your chart, you can actually see what you're specifically looking at in terms of your evolutionary development. And it's really, really fascinating. So the next time you begin to understand your chart in terms of aspects and phases, I highly encourage you to, to learn about aspects and phases, to, to go and investigate it. And part of my astrology school, I actually teach this when I educate anybody that's wanting to understand evolutionary astrology. So this is something that when you really want to get into astrology, it's something you don't, you don't like miss because it's so empowering. I'll give you a quick example again, just, just before we jump into this, okay? Let's say, for instance, um, I have Jupiter and, I have, and I'm measuring Mars, Mars and Jupiter, okay? We know that Jupiter is the slowest moving planet in relationship to Mars, so Jupiter stands there. And we will say that Mars is in a, Mars is exactly 300 degrees, okay, away from Jupiter. In other words, uh, Mars has gone all the way around the astrology chart like that because it's moving in that motion and it gets all the way to that 300 degrees over there. Now, Mars is what is called in a last quarter phase in relationship to Jupiter. So when you look at Mars and Jupiter in the charts and you understand that phase relationship, you can actually see that the soul's desires in this lifetime, this is the, the evolutionary astrology, the soul's desires in this lifetime are actually evolving through individuating, in other words, finding and breaking out of the mold of belief systems that they used in the past and allowing us to see perspectives from different unique perspective, uh, points of views. That's the way that that Mars and Jupiter in a very plain way would be operating in somebody's chart. Now you come into a world that is very like homogenized and very sort of like, this is how truth is and this is what it's gotta be. And you put somebody in that's natural tendency is to not follow those rules. Can you begin to see the way that we as human beings are so com complex that's why we have a lot of people in the world saying, well, I'm an atheist, because most of them have got phasal relationships that are breaking down, that are not listening to the general consensus. How much do we accept other people for having their own evolutionary degree? We don't understand it, so therefore we judge it. And this is the type of dynamics that we can get into when we understand more of who we are as a human race to alleviate the chaos that we've got. Food for thought. Hello, my Gemini friends, and welcome to your sun sign forecast for the month of March, 2017. And I hope you well. And uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed the introduction video in terms of um, aspects and phases and seeing how evolutionary astrology maps the way that we um, evolve through the cycles. And um, if of course you wanna learn evolutionary astrology, I, on the 11th of March, have got a, a beginner's course starting an astrology class. class. And uh, in the description below is a link to sign up for that. Or if you want to ask me some more questions, you're more than welcome to email me and I'll be happy to um, help you out with anything you want to know about how you're going to learn, etc., how you get your material and so on and so forth. Okay. Alrighty then. So let's jump into this for you. 
And uh, the first place we're obviously going to look is uh, Pluto. There's Pluto over there. And Pluto's moving in is in your eighth house. It's been there since uh, 2008. And of course, the nature of your emotional attachments has really been what's been influencing you on a deep level. Okay, you've been dealing a lot with the emotional trauma around abandonment, loss and betrayal, feeling disempowered. And this is really the time while Pluto is moving through Capricorn to intensely empower yourself through, um, you know, becoming even more connected to what you love, becoming even more connected to um, what it is that symbolizes empowerment to you. And you'll notice that you've grown an intense amount uh, since 2008, especially around what you feel has been evolution for you, but it hasn't been a, an easy ride, my Gemini friends. Um, the last thing that I do want to say about this as well is, is that, of course, for the month of March, we're going to be looking specifically at what's actually evolving for you. And um, this is a very interesting dynamic because Venus is a, the focus point, in my opinion. And because Venus being the focus point, there is an intense folk connection between the nature of your evolutionary dynamics around how you relate to people and the trust and intimacy that's associated with it. And you've been dealing a lot with like, how do you share money? How do you share power? And how do people share power with you, etc. That's what you've been watching. And with Venus being in, in um, the nature of how we relate to people, of course, this has been, this is going to be a very uh, big month for you. That's what I want to say. Okay. So let's have a look at what's actually playing out for you as well. Um, I want to draw our attention firstly to Jupiter in your fifth house, your solar fifth house. That's in Libra. And I've been speaking about this a lot, okay? Again, uh, Gemini's, you've been working a lot since last year, April. Sorry, not last year, April. What am I saying? Last year, um, August, um, around what type of um, creativity, what type of joy, what type of um, self-actualization do you bring to the table that gives you a deep sense of meaning for life, right? What, what type of individuality do you want to see? How is your creativity working? How are you following your bliss, as it were? And of course, with Jupiter moving through your solar fifth house, it's been expanding that, but you might have felt that it not has it hasn't necessarily been that way. Um, and so, I think that this month is going to be a big change in terms of what you consider fun and what you don't consider fun. So, if we go ahead and look at the actual uh, planetary energies that are taking place for us on the on the fifth of March, you've got um, Venus actually going retrograde, as you can see over there. Venus is moving into retrograde motion. It's in Aries. And you can see that Venus is in a balsamic phase to Uranus. And you can see that Mars is in a new phase relationship to Uranus. And this pretty much sums up the nature of what March is going to be like for us. Venus is going to be saying, I've still got stuff, stuff to complete. I've still got stuff to let go and decondition from. And Mars is saying, okay, well, that's great, but we still want to kind of be moving forward. So what are you letting go that is allowing you to move forward? It's kind of the mantra for this this uh, month. What are you letting go that's allowing you to move forward? So in your case, of course, that's where you're feeling empowered and disempowered. And what type of joy and creativity do you find in life and through social experiences? Okay, what type of group dynamics? Now, if you look over here, you've got um, the South Node, Neptune, Mercury, and the Sun, and Chiron, all in your 10th house, your solar 10th house. So of course, this is around the dissolving of an old identity, okay? So for you, as Venus goes retrograde, it begins to initiate the completion cycle of a life direction that you once were going in and the rebirthing of an entirely new life direction. So this is a big transition for you guys, right? You're absolutely evolving in the most intense way, okay? So give yourselves a pat on the back. On the 12th of March, I can see that, um, where is it? Mercury, Mercury moves into, sorry, not Mercury, I do apologize. Um, Mars enters Taurus. Just let me get my head around this over here. <laughs> Mars enters Taurus and um, on the 9th, okay? And as Mars enters Taurus, it begins to form this grand trine that's taking place. And this is a grand trine is a very significant thing because the overall month for you is focused on Venus, okay? Venus, Pluto, and Jupiter, in my opinion, but really Venus. Now, Taurus and Libra are co-ruled by the planet Venus in evolutionary astrology. And the reason why is because 
One represents an internal relationship to yourself, and the other one represents an inter uh, the relationship that you have to others. So Venus is co-ruled by them. And because Venus has got the attention this month, the spotlights on Venus, we're paying attention to Mars moving into Taurus, not as a coincidence, but as a natural way in which you begin to initiate what you need to let go in this month that are not supporting your joy, right? Your essential needs. What is your inner relationship to yourself like that's not supporting you? your um, joy and empowerment. Now on the 12th of March, okay, as you can see over there, we have a solar uh, full moon. And this solar full moon that's taking place is going to initiate whatever was taking place for you when we had the solar eclipse that happened on the 27th. Uh, sorry, I think it was the 25th, 26th of, of um, February. Okay, so that solar eclipse that happened for us, and write in the comments below, I'd really be interested to hear what actually happened to you. That solar eclipse, life direction, that solar eclipse is now bringing you into the attention around what to let go and what insight to bring with you, okay? Right, this full moon is this process. You read a book full of insight. You don't strap the book to your body and carry it with you as a way of keeping those insights. Your insights are naturally stored within your consciousness. And you bring those insights to situations in life relative to when they need to be applied. So the same thing's happening here. You finished reading the book, you put the book away, that's the Pisces dissolving, that's the ending, but you bring your insights with you. And this full moon is about integration of those insights relative to what you are letting go. So what are the essential needs of the past that you're letting go? What insights are you bringing with from that past identity? And what is that, how those insights gonna be influencing an exploration of a new direction? Okay. And so for you, of course, this is about your life direction. Like I said, your new sense of identity, your new identity, your new empowerment process, your new creative fun and joy and excitement. Okay. And then if we move over to um, the 13th of uh, March, you can see Mercury moves into Aries. And that is going to begin to initiate new questionings within your consciousness around what, what is this new direction? What do I want to do with this new, um, sense of freedom that I have as I let go of the past. And then on the 20th of March, we have the sun enter Aries. And I just want to show you something over here. As the sun enters Aries, it begins to then double up on this month, right? So this month is about letting go, letting go, letting go, new insights, new insights, new insights, letting go, letting go, letting go, new insights, new insights. And as the sun enters Aries, it begins another layer of exploration. So as you're deconditioning, as you're letting go, as you're breaking free from social dynamics and group activities that no longer support your highest um, like creative pursuit, you will begin to see that you will apply new insights and that will begin to initiate new cycles within yourself. And this is the point. The point is that there is a new energy pattern breathing its fire into your life at this stage. So go with the flow naturally, okay? And of course, you can see how the moon conjunct Saturn in Sag. So this is where as the sun enters Aries and the moon enters, uh, goes over Saturn, it's about the structure of your belief system and how you relate to yourself and others in relationships and Aries, the new exploration. Okay. And on the 22nd, I just want to show you something over here on the 22nd, um, the sun, can you see there? The sun is, bef is before Venus. And then we go, yeah, to the 20, um, 22nd. Okay, so it's not actually happening. Okay, and then if we go over to the 22nd of um, March, you can see Pluto and the moon make a connection. That Pluto and the moon is a very intense, stressful aspect, and that aspect is going to initiate what is happening here. And that will literally be the energy that will break down everything that is no longer supporting you on your essential needs. So that's a bit of an intense experience at that stage, and it will actually initiate an entirely new evolutionary cycle for us, okay? And then on the 27th of March, we've got a new moon in Aries, okay? Now I wanna show you something over here, okay? The moon is conjunct the south node in Pisces, and the sun is now crossed over Venus. So as that Pluto and moon connection took place, Literally within two days time, the sun and the sun will move over Venus and the moon will be conjunct the south node. And that's when the final like release is going to take place. The final birthing process is going to take place for us where we're going to finally release 
what it is that we've we've needed to do and then as the new moon hits for us on the on the 27th that's when everything's going to be reborn regarding a new structure of um values a new structure of essential needs and we don't know what it's about yet we just know that we're being reborn in that moment and there's this new desire for exploration and it's not a coincidence that as that happens um venus will begin to move into pisces i think around the third of, of april um and as it moves into pisces we'll begin exploring our inspiration of what this new direction is about so there's a lot of fantastic things taking place for us um, in this month and i feel that uh, for you gemini evolution and the time to follow your dreams and creatively self-actualize yourself is now okay hope you have a fantastic month and i'll speak to you soon take care my friends bye bye